It's been quite some time since we covered Koki Mitani, the comedy writer, director, and man of the stage, who in 1997 introduced the world to Welcome Back Mr. McDonald. Known in the original Japanese as Radio Time, the film went on to garner a number of nominations and some serious accolades come award season. Unfortunately, the film never made it very far outside of Japan, only being available in English in the capacity of unofficial fan subs. We'd like to reiterate that if you're going to get your hands on a copy, Welcome Back Mr. McDonald is well worth the search. Unfortunately, it would appear that the same fate has befallen the majority of Koki Mitani's works. Most, if not all, of his films that have been brought into the English-speaking world have done so unofficially. This makes returning to his filmography both difficult and rewarding. That being said, today's subject, released almost a decade after the earlier film, is equally elusive yet equally glorious in its hilarity, Another Darling at Home becoming the third highest grossing domestic film of 2006, and the eighth overall when foreign films are included. This project only made a minor impact overseas. Written and directed by Koki Mitani, The Uchiten Hotel was released in Japanese theaters on January 14th, 2006. Later in the year, it screened at the Cognac Film Festival in France. Between 2009 and 2011, it continued to play at various film festivals in Taiwan, Japan, and Australia. Despite not having a wide release in any English-speaking countries, IMDb lists several supposedly official English titles, including the Wauchoten Hotel and Sweet Dreams. Uchiten translates to something like ecstasy, so whether one goes with the original, untranslated name or the punny Sweet Dreams, either seems like a good option. Throughout this video, we'll be using the original name for the sake of simplicity. In 2007, the film racked up a number of nominations at the Japanese Academy Awards and the Asian Film Critics Association Awards. Looking over Mitani's other works, it's pretty typical that his films garner a huge amount of critical support, especially from the Japanese Academy. Unfortunately, unlike Welcome Back, the Uchoten Hotel was blocked from all 11 of its nominations, losing out to almost every other major film nominated in at least one category. Don't let this seem like a mark against the film, though. It has quite a lot to offer. Just like McDonald, Uchoten boasts a massive cast led by Koji Yakusho, who plays Heikichi Shindo, an aspiring hotelier too embarrassed to admit he left behind a career in the theater for his current job. Intersecting with Shindo's story are a multitude of others. There's Hana Takemoto, played by Yakako Amatsu, a housekeeper who gets wrapped up in the lives of a few folks whose rooms she's cleaning. There's Katsutochi Mutoda, played by Koichi Sato, a politician embroiled in a scandal involving corruption, who is currently hiding out in Shindo's hotel. There's Tokiko Yabe, played by Keiko Toda, one of the higher-ups in the hotel who works seamlessly with Shindo and the rest of the staff to keep things running smoothly. And this is to say nothing of Yoko, played by Ryoko Shinohara, a call girl who is involved with Shindo's ex-wife's new husband, and who comes to know the disgraced senator Mutoda or the entire society based around deer fertility, which keeps said new husband as a member, or Kenji Tadano, played by Shingo Katori, a bellboy set to retire from the hotel so he might chase his dreams of a career in music, or perhaps most charmingly, the magic and theater troupe who lost their most important member, one Rubadub, a duck, just before their big performance. Suffice to say, there's a lot going on in this movie. To make matters more convoluted, the entire film takes place on the evening of New Year's Eve. Shindo and his superiors are setting up for the holiday festivities for a number of different groups. Shindo and company must find the hotel's calligraphy artist and convince him to help redesign a major banner which contains a misprint. They must make sure the Dear Fertility, yeah, Dear Fertility, Society's Hall is all ready to go. They must help track down Rabadub the Duck to help get their show going on time, and so much more. All the while, matters are worsened by the presence of certain individuals. Shindo's ex-wife shows up thanks to her husband's presence. This becomes inconvenient for Shindo as he feels he must lie about his job. They divorced due to different philosophies on work and life. He wanted to pursue theater, and now here he is in hotels, yet still without her. The new couple's life is complicated in turn by the presence of the call girl Yoko, who can't stay away from the husband, and who is persistently being thrown off the premises by Shindo's rival. Oh, did we not mention that the hotelier in charge is gearing up to decide who will take over the building in his place down the road? Yeah, that's another element. 
and Shindo's only real competition is an old fuddy-duddy stick in the mud, who plays everything by the book and genuinely seems like he might be incapable of laughter. This whole dynamic is ratcheted up as well when the elderly owner accidentally gets painted up like a ghost, and in turn gets mistaken for one repeatedly, only to be chased around the back corridors of the hotel late into the night. As you can probably gather from all of that, the Uchoten Hotel is an even more intense version of Welcome Back, Mr. McDonald. The proceedings here are on a grander scale, with a larger cast and greater stakes that fan out between characters' love, lives, politics, futures, and careers. And we didn't even mention everyone who makes an appearance here, given that we don't want to spoil the whole movie for you. Nor do we want this episode to run overly long. But seriously, we ought to at least mention the bit involving an old Enka singer named Zenbu Tokugawa, and played by Toshiyuki Nishida, who is too depressed to give his evening performance and needs cheering up by the hotel staff in order to regain his spirit. But see, what we just did there is what this movie is all about. The Uchoten Hotel is made up of so many small vignettes, all of which are interconnected in some way, that will have you and your fellow viewers laughing and reminiscing on it long after watching it together. This is just one part of the film's brilliance, however, as the film's techniques and perspective shifting are both of note here. Some of the filmmaking techniques used in Welcome Back are reincorporated within the Uchiten Hotel. From the beginning, we observe a long opening shot, covering a lot of ground and a lot of folks. Just as with the earlier film, we establish both the space of the hotel lobby, the central hub where many of the character connections and intersections occur throughout the runtime, and the majority of the cast. With only observations being made by the staff, we learn what their stance is on some of the guests and the less desirable visitors, like Yoko the Call Girl. Before we delve further into their individual backstories later, admittedly, this shot is not entirely unbroken this time around, but the events on display are just as hectic within the hotel lobby as they were within the radio studio. Additionally, in order to help us understand the immensity of the hotel's space and the numerous people on display, other shots like this pepper the film. More or less, when we enter new areas of the premises, and we're meeting new groups with new dynamics, we can expect another lengthy tracking shot, switching between multiple different perspectives. As we mentioned in our discussion of Welcome Back Mr. McDonald, this technique is likely inspired by Mitani's work on the stage, in such a setting where a director must use a set amount of space to their advantage, and where they cannot zoom in or out, Mitani had to make the best use of having a fairly large cast in a fairly large area. Now he can use the camera as a spotlight might be used on stage, to show us which character is speaking and who we ought to focus on at a given time. Yet Mitani doesn't often cut between different angles here, instead favoring the use of long, relatively unbroken shots, which follow the action as it progresses. In a way, the progression of time in the Ushoten Hotel uses this same technique, given that the film plays out in real time as the night moves toward the beginning of the new year. Most films make liberal use of time distortion, jumping about whenever they want without explicitly saying how much time has gone by. The Uchoten Hotel, on the other hand, does the exact opposite, using its time in a very literal sense. In a way, this can help the audience connect with the events of the film and offer us the sense that we're sitting in a theater, observing Mitani's troupe play these events out in time with our viewing. As Shindo's boss explains, the hotel's social ranking for the year is determined on New Year's Eve, establishing Shindo's perspective on why this is such an important night. The only problem for Shindo and his boss is, there are a lot of other folks who don't see things this way, leading to many snafus that need to be handled to bump their ranking up. Thanks to the Deer group, the senator, the ex-wife and new husband, the call girl, and poor little rub dub needless to say, there are a lot of ways in which tonight could flip upside down and harm the hotel. It's up to Shindo and his team, with Shindo here making use of his background in theater, just like Mitani, to direct the stage movements of his subordinates. However, as with the senator and the case of mistaken identity with the housekeeper, the hotel never delves deeper into their guests than they need to. They respect the privacy of their guests. Even Yoko the call girl, once she becomes involved with the senator, and is an actual guest. This necessitates the film showing us these other points of view, if we are to understand them. Thanks to all of the side characters mentioned earlier, the Uchoten Hotel presents us with tons of kinetic energy. 
the energy is exuded by the number of people populating the location, as well as the constant camera movement. We observe everything from events behind the scenes to the main stage to the side halls and the hotel rooms. This level of energy never lets up, ramping up even more than Welcome Back. What's more, this is further affected by all of the overlap and the particular intersections of these people's lives, the film being concerned with coincidence and happenstance. We have the professor of deer fertility talking trash about the senator and his scandal, in spite of himself cheating on his wife. It doesn't help that Yoko has compromising photos of the husband, which she in turn shares with the senator as a joke. Even Shindo is awkward. He's here, lying to his ex-wife and saying that he's still in theater, and that he's receiving a stage award. In reality, the accolade in question is a stag award, which is going to Shindo's ex-wife's husband. There's also one of the women working at the hotel potentially having a relationship with the senator at some point earlier. Once she's caught in the wrong room, however, she ends up pretending to be with a different older man. Kenji, the worker who is quitting his job to pursue music, is finally able to sit down at the restaurant's cafe and try their latte, only to run into a woman from his hometown who talks to him about his musical aspirations. If we keep going on like this, we'll retread the entire film with all of its various subplots and parallel lines, which would probably be a shame. In truth, the Uchoten Hotel is a hilarious romp that all of you should go track down and watch for yourselves. Stylistically, it's very reminiscent of McDonald, though with its own themes and interests, not to mention the larger scale and greater sense of urgency on display at points. It's a film as much about the journey as the destination, teasing out a dozen or so individual threads, each with their own small threads attached, and then perfectly tying them all up by the end of the night. Even if you didn't know this was a thing, trust us. The Uchoten Hotel is the perfect New Year's Eve movie. Hey, it's a holiday that's severely underrepresented in the film market. If you're sick of watching the ball drop, and you're looking for something to help cheer you up and cap off the year, and, uh, I mean, it certainly was a year, then this is your ticket. As we said, the film unfortunately doesn't have an official English release, but fan subs are available, meaning that the film is easily accessible for English speakers once a copy has been acquired. Give the Uchiten Hotel a look this New Year's Eve, and let us know below what you think of it. Also, let us know which other films by Koki Mitani we ought to take a look at in the future. Again, this has been quite a year, and if you feel like you could use some feel-good emotions, the Uchiten Hotel might just be what you're looking for, and it can provide a great beginning to your new year.